safer. Tonight, Israel calling it a stunning historic mistake. What does it mean for American security? Martha Raddatz in Iran. Also breaking at this hour, new video of El Chapo from inside his cell just a short time before he escaped into that mile long tunnel. Authorities set to release it. Swept away, multiple homes gone in seconds. The search for the missing at this hour, the deadly system now moving east. The miracle survivor tonight, the daughter walking out of the woods two days after a plane crash. And the other plane tonight landing in the middle of traffic. And we're just hours away tonight, Christmas in July. It's Amazon versus Walmart. And our reporter tonight with the list of mega deals. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Tuesday night. And we begin with that historic deal with Iran, sparking some celebrations in Iran. But there has also been backlash here at home. It is a major victory for President Obama, saying the deal is, quote, not built on trust. It is built on verification. Tonight, vowing to veto any efforts by Congress to derail the deal. To millions of Americans, it's an agreement few could have imagined. Those images from more than 30 years ago, Americans blindfolded, held hostage at the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. Tonight, decades later, Iranians watching President Obama. ABC's Martha Raddatz is the only network reporter on the ground in Tehran. But we begin tonight with ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, in Vienna, where the deal was struck. Here they are, those jubilant negotiators in their moment of triumph. You can see it on John Kerry's face. This moment has been a long time coming, and we have worked very hard to get here. 18 days in Vienna, two years of high-stakes diplomacy, six years since President Obama first reached out directly to Iran's supreme leader, and 36 years since this. <laughs> The 1979 hostage crisis, Iran holding 52 American diplomats and citizens hostage for 444 long, terrifying, humiliating days. Today, Mr. Obama charting a new course. This deal offers an opportunity to move in a new direction. We should seize it. Iran now agrees to sharply cut back its nuclear program that has alarmed the world by dismantling two-thirds of all its key nuclear machinery for 10 years reducing its uranium stockpile by 98% for 15 years and submitting to continuous international monitoring and inspections. And the U.S. agrees to help Iran thrive by ending those crippling economic sanctions, recognizing Iran's right to even keep a peaceful nuclear program and allowing Iran over time to buy weapons, even ballistic missiles. This deal demonstrates that American diplomacy can bring about real and meaningful change. Critics pounced on the deal. Among the first and fiercest, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, who called it a stunning, historic mistake. But Secretary Kerry shot back in a spirited interview with us today. The alternative is to, what, go to war immediately? Bomb them? Sanction them further? Well, wait, no, you can't sanction them further. For decades, the United States and Iran have been sworn enemies. But you got the sense here today that a new era has begun, for better or worse. David. Terry Moran in Vienna again tonight for us. And ABC's chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, the only American network reporter in Iran, reporting tonight from one of those celebrations when word broke that the crippling U.S. led economic sanctions will be lifted. Good evening, David. Coming to you from the very noisy streets of Tehran, where spontaneous celebrations have been breaking out tonight, celebrating the historic deal between America, its partners, and Iran. All of these people know that those punishing sanctions will be lifted within the next couple of months, and many civilians, many of these people, have suffered under those sanctions. What is even more remarkable is we're about two miles from the former American embassy, where in 1979, 52 Americans were held hostage for 444 days. That event changed the relationship between Iran and America for 35 years. But here we are tonight. David? Martha Raddatz in Tehran, where some are calling this a victory tonight. Martha, thank you. It is also a major political victory for President Obama. But tonight, the fierce opposition already on Capitol Hill. Some members of Congress vowing to fight it, determined to knock down the deal. So we sent John Carl straight to Capitol Hill, where he heard an earful tonight about what they plan to do. 
Walking the halls of Congress, we found Republicans unified in opposing the Iran deal. Leading the charge, freshman Senator Tom Cotton. So what do you think of this deal? It's not bad. Terrible, tragic mistake. Cotton tried to derail the Iran negotiations back in March by writing a letter signed by 47 Republican senators and sent to Iran's supreme leader. It warned the next president could undo any agreement with the stroke of a pen. Now he says he wants Congress to kill the deal. Okay, so what's the bottom line? How bad do you think this agreement is? It may be the worst diplomatic agreement in the history of the United States. Really? Why? Because it's putting a outlaw terror sponsoring regime on the path to a nuclear weapon. John Carl back at the White House from Capitol Hill and John Congress now has 60 days to vote on this deal. Yes, and President Obama has said point blank today that he will veto any effort by Congress to derail this agreement. Republicans would need a lot of help from Democrats to override that veto. I would be surprised to see that happen, David. But I've got to tell you, there is a lot of Democratic concern tonight about this agreement. All right, John Carl, Martha Raddatz, Terry Moran, our thanks to you all. In the meantime tonight, we are also following new developments in the international manhunt for El Chapo. On the run after that brazen prison break, not the first time either. Here he is right here, hauled back in after his first prison break. That time on the run for 13 years. Tonight, authorities studying that hole at the end of a mile-long tunnel where El Chapo emerged to freedom. There is word coming in tonight. They are preparing to release video of El Chapo in his prison cell a short time before the escape. ABC's Gio Benitez on the ground in Mexico for us again tonight. Tonight, Mexican officials issuing a bounty, offering nearly $4 million for information leading to the capture of one of the most notorious men in the world, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. This is the most recent photo of El Chapo, now bald and without that famous mustache, and gone without a trace. Three top officials at this maximum security prison now fired. Authorities telling us someone on the inside must have helped him escape to this house, which remains under tight security. The house is set just a mile away from the prison where El Chapo escaped from. That escape route starting beneath his shower. A ladder dropping him 30 feet into a well-lit ventilated tunnel. Custom built to his height, just 5 feet 6 inches tall. Also inside, a modified motorcycle to help carve the passageway. El Chapo climbing out of this tunnel, undetected and vanishing. Given its sophistication, it probably cost at least $5 million, but to Chapo Guzman, that would be like five dollars. Tunnels like El Chapo's escape route dot the U.S.-Mexico border. This elaborate one opening right underneath a San Diego warehouse. Sources now telling us that El Chapo's escape means more violence in Mexico and more drugs into the U.S. David. Gio Benitez in Mexico again tonight. Now to the severe weather turning deadly tonight in this country. The map saying it all. 60 million Americans in the storm zone at this hour. From Cincinnati to D.C., Memphis to Atlanta. Flash flood watches in nine states now that line of storms marching eastward. It is the same system wreaking havoc in Kentucky. In Flat Gap, Johnson County, homes washed away just incredible scenes there under the bridge. Not the only home washed away, in fact. And tonight, at least two are now dead. They are searching for six missing at this hour. ABC's Kendis Gibson in the flood zone with the pictures of those homes being washed away. Tonight, severe weather turning deadly. They can't get out. Oh, you know they're scared to death. Oh, my God. In Johnson County, Kentucky, four inches of rain and a flash wiping out dozens of homes, many with people still inside. Jesus, please be with these people in us. Those floating homes slamming right into this brick. This is your brother's place. Yeah, this is my brother's place. Paul Stapleton's family washing away with their home. He managed to rescue them with a boat, the family clinging to a tree downriver. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty sad at all. Nothing pretty about this. But at least they were alive. They're alive. Washed out roads and debris everywhere, making the search for survivors even harder. In the last 24 hours, nearly 500 reports of severe weather. A tornado touching down in Hutchinson, Kansas. The twister packing 165 mile an hour winds captured by a drone. Tonight, residents throughout this area are bracing for more storms and the possibility of more flash flooding. It is the last thing they need.
David? Just an incredible scene, Candace. Thank you. And as Candace points out, bracing for more, and you've got it, Ginger. And the same areas that were hit, a lot of them. Seeing flood watches, but also those severe thunderstorm watches, David. The pink on the map is the important part, but there are severe thunderstorm warnings popping right now just west of Washington, D.C. There have already been tornadoes reported. More than 130 severe storm reports at this point. That number will grow very quickly. Overnight, and after midnight is when those storms start to die out a bit. But we still have a severe weather threat yet tonight in the regions that you can see here from West Kansas, that little pocket, then from Nashville up to D.C., Richmond and Raleigh, you're in it, and you get it again tomorrow. So we put on the Wednesday severe weather threat. Savannah, Georgia has it, back in Nebraska and the Northern Plains. Finally, really quickly, David, the heat has been intense in the Plains. Wichita, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and an excessive heat warning. The heat of summer. All right, Ginger Z tonight. Thank you. Now to Rhode Island. Investigators now saying tonight that mystery beach explosion was not a criminal act. The blast throwing a woman four feet into the air on Saturday onto the rocks. The governor today insisting the beach is safe, saying authorities found no explosive device. An electrical cable found buried in the sand right there on Monday has been removed, though, for inspection. We have new details tonight in the case of that miracle survivor, the young woman, the plane carrying her and her step-grandparents crashing over the weekend. Her grandparents did not survive. She did. Emerging from the woods after more than two days, and tonight for the first time here, her 911 call and the unlikely things she says taught her how to stay alive. Here's ABC's Ryan Owens. A selfie in her hospital room. She's 16 after all. Autumn Veach continues to recover, even watching news coverage of her survival story. Tonight, we hear the young woman's voice for the first time as she tells a 911 operator how she lived through a plane crash. Yeah, the only one that survived. Okay. Are you injured at all? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of burns on my hands, and I'm like kind of covered in bruises and scratches and stuff. They were flying from Montana to Washington State Saturday afternoon when she says the small plane hit bad weather and slammed into the side of a mountain. She's kind of like a superhero. With no sign of help, she started hiking down the mountain following a creek that led to a river. She kept walking the water's edge until finally on Monday, she found a road and flagged down a car. Her dad says she learned how to stay alive in this rugged wilderness by watching survival shows with him, including Discovery's Survivor Man. Survival. Survivor Man, she'd be very proud of her. Tonight, Autumn is undergoing tests here at the hospital to see if she'll have to spend a second night. Meanwhile, searchers still haven't found any sign of that down plane, evidence of just how rugged this wilderness is. David really is an amazing story, Ryan. Thank you. We have new developments from Boston tonight. The son of that Boston police captain, the veteran officer, one of the heroes during the Boston bombings, turning in his own son. 23 year old Alexander Chicolo under arrest, accused of plotting an ISIS inspired attack in court today. Prosecutors laying out the evidence, including videotaped interviews in which he reportedly calls the victims beheaded by ISIS, quote, the criminals. The judge saying he could be a threat to the public. He will be detained until the trial. Now to California tonight, authorities under fire there in what had been called the real life Gone Girl case. The young woman and her boyfriend accused by police of staging her kidnapping. That couple now vindicated the FBI coming forward with a suspect, a Harvard law graduate now under arrest. So tonight, ABC Cecilia Vega tracking down the police who did not believe that couple. Tonight, a resounding, we told you so. Today, there is vindication. Today is a fabulous day for Denise Huskins, for Aaron Quinn. Tears of relief for the couple accused of staging an elaborate kidnapping hoax straight out of the blockbuster Gone Girl. Meticulously stage your crime scene. The FBI arresting the accused mastermind, 38-year-old Matthew Muller, a Harvard-educated former lawyer. Unsealed court documents revealing bizarre new details. It was March 23rd, about 3 a.m. The intruders wearing wetsuits and carrying squirt guns with laser pointers attached. Investigators say they tied up, drugged, and forced the couple to wear swimming goggles with tape covering the lenses and headsets, a pre-recorded calm-sounding voice giving orders. Huskins telling police the intruders had protocols in place as if they'd done this before. Two days later, Huskins emerges 400 miles away near her father's Southern California home. The FBI says near Mueller's home, agents found goggles with a strand of long blonde hair the same color as Huskins.
But tonight, the police department that called the whole thing a hoax is not apologizing. Does the Vallejo Police Department owe this couple an apology? We're going to evaluate that when the investigation is complete and then go from there. Did you drop the ball? I don't believe so, no. And now different...